Hello and welcome back. I'm just putting away these blood and custard coaches. They've been out on the railway for quite a time now and I've been having good fun with the, uh, the Green Princess charging around the layout this morning. So I'm just going to wrap them up. Because the, the wheels are being oiled and they're open axle boxes, they tend to seep a little bit. So uh, I, I wrap them in, uh, in a bit of kitchen paper and, and bubble wrap just so the oil doesn't sort of spread onto the bubble wrap and then seep all the way around the onto the coach sides and so on, it's no good for the coaches in the long run, so we'll pop that. And there you can see I've got a number of unboxed items in here as well as a handful of boxed. And uh, we're going to have a look at a, a couple of items on, on the railway. Again, it's uh, been a, a week of bits and pieces. Um, I think the Bobo Electric has been um, finished off a little. I've added some decals. There's, uh, ones I was mentioning last week, I think it looks pretty good. It is just a model for, for testing the catenary, but uh, it's sort of livened it up a little bit. And um, the uh, Caledonian single we saw a few weeks ago, which had uh, the wheels which had been painted, the rims, that uh, the, the, the running surfaces had been painted. Uh, somebody very kindly has uh, supplied me with, with a set of, a set of wood, not only tender wheels, uh, but uh, locomotive wheels and, and front bogey wheels, a full set. Um, a really beautiful set of wheels. They're from the uh, early 70s version of the model and they're plated. So we're going to have a look at that running. I've got it with some of the, those uh, Hornby four wheel coaches, which are blue. I know they're not quite the right livery, but they happen to look quite uh, quite pretty on the layout. So we'll, we'll have a look at those. I'll just get this, this box put away. And we're just catching up with the Pullman service from last week. We're going to run her around and put her into the passing loop. So take off a little power as we come into the curve here. Just slowing down for the uh, crossover. Points number five there. Looking good passing the Bobo Electric with the illuminated coaches. Into that curve at the end of the loop there. And we'll try and bring her to a stop just before we get to the camera here. Nice long shot there. Let's see if we can slow her down. Nice gentle stop about there. And we've just nudged out a frame a little, but that valve gear looks to be in, in the perfect photographic position, doesn't it? I think we'll leave that wonderful model of the Britannia there in the sidings for now with a rake of coaches. And we'll move across the layout towards the Bobo Electric with the illuminated coaches. There's that great princess I was charging around the layout with this morning. Early one from the, uh, from the late 50s, I think, uh, Mark II couplings. Lost most of her lining on, on the boiler there and the, uh, the varnish is all worn through, but lovely model to run on the railway. Very, very solid on the rails. And you can see the, the tops of my engine sheds need a bit of a clean, they're very dusty. I've been adjusting that ventilator, there's a clip missing. and The vibration of the railway makes it drop down occasionally. Certainly looks like a job for 3D printing in the future, I think. Lovely Pullmans and DMUs sitting there in the uh, lines next to the engine shed. So we'll just move down and have a look at this uh, group of models here. So this is the uh, Bobo Electric I've mentioned and we've seen a couple of times in the, in the last few videos. It's uh, been repainted quite, quite crudely by somebody else and by me, uh, but I didn't do the filler work over the cabs, which is also quite crude. And we've got the, the addition of tanks and some wiring on the top and I've given it these numbers and um, the BR logo on the side, but uh, here we've got these great Mark II coaches. These came along in the late 60s, lasted till the early 70s, I think, with the illumination, but Mark II coaches went right on up through the Hornby Railways period, into the Hornby period, I think. But uh, So we're getting power from the track for these, and we're gonna get power from the overhead for the uh, electric locomotive here. So this one, when I got it out, the wire was fractured to go into the bogey. So that required a, a little bit of a mend this morning. Um, it, it's very optimistic. There's a lot of flex in those bogey rivets going around the corners so that it, and the wires are very thin, so they do tend to fracture. So we'll get to the controls and we'll see if we can do a couple of moves around the layout with it, see how she looks. Look at those, uh, those coaches in action. I'm just backed into the wall there. Sorry about the jolt. So this is all handheld again and sound quality can be quite poor with the uh, equipment I've got when working handheld. So you'll have to excuse it, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to move the model just around, just into this area here so we can just have a swift look at the coach lighting. So we'll, we'll give it a little bit of power. 
grab the right controller. So here we go. Lovely sound from those uh, ribbed wheels or knurled wheels. So there we've got a couple of coaches in shot there. So I'll just stop that there. And you'll see if I adjust the other controller, I can turn the lights off or on the dim setting or the very bright setting. So I think we'll have it somewhere in between there for now. And be kind to those bulbs there and the rooftops. Of course, they'll get hot and melt at some point. So we'll have a little bit more power and we'll see if we can follow around the layout a little. So away we go. Lovely noise off in the distance. Just back off the power a fraction. And she's going to come back down the side of the station here. Let's see if we can follow her around a little bit more. Again, Pantograph doing the work quite nicely. This is the tiniest flicker on those lights. But I think uh, it looks pretty good for what it is. 50, 60 year old toy. Hiding down the station again and emerges again. Let's see if we can come down a little lower as she comes towards camera here. That's some of those uh, goods wagons we were playing with the other day. Mark 1's sitting on the end of the spur on the passing loop there. So I think when I work my way back to the controller, And if I get there in time, I'll see if I can stop it at the station. So we've got the right controller. Just a tiny bit further forward, I think, and then we'll back up onto that uncoupling ramp. Just going to uh, swap hands here and uh, operate the uncoupling round. There we go, and let's see if she's uh, separated. So a little bit of power, and we'll come forward of points number uh, eight there. And again, dodgy work stopping on the points. So let's uh, throw points eight. Again, excuse the camera wandering. Let's see if we can back up through those points and we'll run around those coaches. And we'll just stop there while we attend to the point work. So we're going to close number eight. And then we're going to open number seven. Just the other end of those coaches there. Probably just out of view for you at the moment. You should be able to see the locomotive go through though. Let's give this a go. Inevitably, I'm running the wrong way there. There we have it. So let's switch number seven. And let's uh, see if we can cup up nice and gently. I think we have those. And then we'll run off around the layout in the opposite direction. See if we can stop at that uncoupling ramp again. And then we'll just take the tension out. We'll just go backwards see the coach lighting is still all on. Just nudge it back a little like that. And then uh, I've got to swap hands on the, the camera again, unfortunately, to reach the switch on the other side. I don't think I put that uncoupling ramp down, so the weight of the engine has pushed it down, but we need to lift it again. And then let's see if we can uh, move away. We're going to have to run the, around the layout now because the coaches are, are sitting over the crossover at present. The advantage of having a round and round layout, I suppose. We'll uh, 
join those up nice and gently. See if I can get the camera in a position where we can see that happen. There we have it. So uh, while we're stationary, I'm just going to uh, throw points number seven, so we'll jump onto the outside line for a moment. Again, let's try and remember which way we're going to go with this controller this time. So off towards the first radius curve and points number seven. If I hold it up, we should be able to see that come through. Stop that there for a moment while we uh, attend to the point work again. I think I'll swap, uh, swap hands on the controller and move the seat a little so I can see a little bit more. So let's go around the uh, elevated section so we'll give it a little bit of power. And the third radius there. You can see the soldering iron in the distance there on the right. Now she will tear up there if you wanted her to. Treble that speed. Into the distance, nice and bright by the window. And we'll back that off so we'll go down the elevated section now. stop about here and I'm going to open up points number five so we can jump onto the passing loop and put her in behind the Pullman. So I don't think we'll see those in the distance. There we have it. So let's uh, bring her gently through. So we're on the passing route, and we'll just come right up to the back end of the Pullman coach here. There we go. Nice stop there. And then I think we'll uh, just close the points while we remember, and then we'll have a, a very swift look at this uh, at this locomotive. So a swift look over the model. I showed you my uh, dodgy paintwork touching up this last week, I think, and there we can see we've got those decals. And if you look really, really closely, you can see the sort of membrane that they're sitting on on the surface. But you know, at arm's length, they sort of do the trick, especially when they're on the layout and running through the catenary posts. They sort of liven the image up a little bit, rather than that uh, sort of dodgy paintwork or dodgier paintwork that it did have. So I was quite pleased with the overall effect there. It is relatively fiddly putting them on. It's sort of a, a bit of a knack. You, you need to have a go on something first before you commit to it. And I, I just put a, a line of uh, masking tape on and worked about a millimetre above it visually and then sort of hold it back and have a look. If you begin to look too close, you end up chasing yourself. And uh, there is a tendency to overwork them and then you, you, you can uh, ruin, ruin the decals. But... Uh, I was quite pleased with that. I um, called them the wrong thing, I think, last week when I was mentioning them. So here is the sheet. They are um, HMRS transfers. This is sheet number 15. So there's a variety of sheets available. And you can see the, the subject it covers. Um, and uh, this was the price. I, I got this uh, a couple of years ago or more when our local model railway shop was still open. So they've been gone a little while now. I'll just whip it out of the packaging and have a look. So they're, they're sort of quite sticky. You can hear, hear them as you peel off the, the backing sheet there and you can see where I've uh, knifed out the numbers and then you sort of turn them over, put them down and position them and then burnish them and then you, you moisten it and, and pull off the, uh, the backing and then you, you dry it and then you can burnish it down again. So there's a knack to it and it's uh, 
Um, quite tricky, but uh, I think probably a bit of enjoyment to have out of doing it. I'm holding that upside down, aren't I? So I have to put it that way up. So uh, again, there are some very, very small numbers on here. Uh, I was uh, working with these ones. The Caledonian single's sitting nicely at the station there. And as I mentioned earlier, I've been very lucky and got a new set of wheels for her. So we'll just see how she does with those. We need to open points number 11 first so we can get some power down to that platform. I'm just struggling for the switch again. There we go, we've got it. That sounds like a reassuring click there. So we'll give her some gentle power and we'll ease her out onto the inside line. Let's see how we do. And we'll snap the point shut just so she comes onto the inside line. We've got those, a little bit of extra power. And we'll head round towards points number seven at the far end of the layout, I think, so we can get onto the outside line. And we'll just snap those open. Nicely through there. Snap them shut. Little stuff on the diamond there. And off we go to the incline section. As we saw the other week, she has no real trouble with this incline, even with a load twice as heavy as she has today. I'll leave a link in the description box. And she looks just stunning coming across the bridge. And I think we'll bring her to a stop just at the end of the layout there, and we'll have a look at the, the new wheels which are on her. Nice gentle stop about there on the corner. And there she is. Doesn't she look lovely with those plated wheels? Uh, I think those are from a uh, early 70s variant of this model. I think the shade must have been a tad lighter, although mine's been varnished so heavily and repainted by hand to embellish it. I, I don't think the colours are, are quite correct anywhere on this particular model. And the uh, tender wheels were replaced with an old uh, scrap tender base from a, a B12. They're the, the same black spoked wheels. So uh, I'll just... Uh, lift off the locomotive and we'll have a, have a swift look over it. Now we have those lovely plated drive wheels and the, uh, the, the plated wheels on the bogey, as I say, I think these uh, derive from a, an early 70s version of the Caledonian single, which was in, uh, in very glossy, glossy livery at the time. So uh, these are really lovely and, and smooth running, even though the shade is just that, that little, bit, uh, little bit lighter. So we'll pop that down. And the tender wheels I replaced were just from a, uh, a chassis of a, a B12 tender. And uh, I think they do the job quite nicely. So uh, I think they're more pleasing to the eye than the, uh, the brightly painted silver ones. And they certainly run better on the rails. And I think that's probably it for this week. Thanks again for watching. It really is hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.